everyone and welcome to this week's Squiggly Careers podcast. I am Helen and I'm joined as ever by my lovely, brilliant co-host Sarah. Oh, I'm enjoying the longer oh, like complimentary it? introduction. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Maybe I'll get longer and longer. Maybe not. I'll just leave You'll that. run out of objectives, I reckon. Yeah, do you think? <laughs> um, so, on to more practical points. This is episode 88 of the Squiggly Queers podcast. Hooray! Um, we're getting closer and closer to episode 100, where we have got exciting things planned. Yeah, we'd even sort out. <laughs> because we'd sort them out, but they're exciting and it may involve a live podcast recording with special guests, several of. We just need to close some things down on that. Uh, but yes, all exciting but this week we are going to be talking about microaggressions which you know I think is a really important topic and is something that Sarah and I think we feel really passionate about and we want to talk about I know we don't talk about things properly but we feel that it's a subject that is quite sensitive and maybe it's a bit difficult but it's super super important and in this week's podcast we want to talk about you know what microaggressions are uh, when they show up and how to deal with them if perhaps it's something that you've experienced or maybe it's something that if you're honest maybe you have shown up with at work sometimes before but if you're new to the squiggly quiz podcast let's give you the 30 seconds version of of who we are and what we do so as you know now we are helen and sarah we co-founded a business called amazing if about six years ago now which has a mission of making work better for everybody we do that in a couple of ways we work with individuals through evening courses that we do we've got a book coming out in january the squiggly career which is very exciting and also through this weekly podcast so we just want to help people give people the tools to help you succeed in what we call a squiggly career which is a career that most of us are now experiencing it's one that's got lots of change and ambiguity and fluidity full of opportunities full of possibility but sometimes can feel a bit challenging because of all that change and all that turbulence Um, and we also work with organizations as well and we work with them on lots of different career development programs so that's us but back to this week then so um microaggressions i think it's useful maybe to start with a bit of a definition because i think it still feels like quite a new term and when we were researching this it has been around microaggressions for quite a long time but i think only in the last 12 months have i heard it being talked about more at work and i think the simplest definition that we found that felt like it encompassed what we believe it to be is that a microaggression is a subtle yet harmful form of discriminatory behavior which is experienced by members of oppressed groups and that feels quite serious and I think it is one of those things because it is quite serious because microaggressions are things that can hold people back at work because they can stop them having opportunities they can actually result in people feeling less confident at work less confident in speaking up uh, less confident in kind of speaking their mind and if you're thinking oh that sounds like quite a difficult definition what does it actually look like in practice or sound like in practice we've got a couple of examples for you which might kind of make it maybe a bit more real So, for example, interrupting people in meetings, particularly actually gender based microaggressions. So there's some research that says that men are are three times more likely to interrupt a woman in a meeting than a man. So interruptions is a big microaggression. It could sound like someone going, gosh, you're really confident to a young person whose age shouldn't even maybe come into whether they look or sound confident enough quite a common one is about saying to somebody who might not be presenting or speaking in their first language something like um gosh you were really articulate as if there was any reason for them not to be or um one that i was reading about that gosh really made me shiver was saying to an lgbtq colleague that you don't come across as gay like what a horrendous comment but actually i read lots of things um where people said they had experienced comments like that that just make you feel really uncomfortable. So these things, unfortunately, do exist in our workplaces. And I think perhaps the difficult thing is that they come from sometimes a lack of awareness, sometimes ignorance, but by and large, they don't seem to be malicious in their intention, but they are still hurtful and difficult for the people that are experiencing them so that's why we kind of feel like it's quite a difficult topic and perhaps also because we're not presenting ourselves as the expert in this I think we will share some of our stories I think we've feel like we've experienced some of this as maybe young people in the workplace maybe female people in the workplace but we haven't experienced the full remit of all the things that we've just talked about but we do think it's an important thing for us to talk about on the podcast 
and we went out to our Instagram community to ask them a little bit about microaggressions to understand to what extent they might have experienced this at work. And two thirds of the people that responded on our poll that we did on Instagram said that they had experienced microaggressions at work. So it's definitely the reality of what some people are having to deal with on a maybe not a day to day basis, but in the course of the work that they're doing. And I think the reason it really matters uh, in any career, but in a squiggly career particularly, is the impact that these microaggressions can have almost because they are smaller, more nuanced comments. And they're often talked about as being comments that are sprinkled throughout day to day life. But you can imagine how those things could build up and impact some really big aspects of how you feel about work and your performance at work really importantly. So things like, you know, lowering people's self-esteem, making people feel alienated or lonely and impacting on people's mental health, which I guess would be almost like a bigger section of the first two that we talked about. And so actually, these things can then add up to being really detrimental to both individuals and to the organisations in terms of performance and productivity. And, you know, these are really big topics as well. You know, we've covered before things like loneliness at work, mental health at work, and how much those cost organisations and the actual impact on people as well. So this is why it's so important that we do talk about it, that we do think about, you know, what are the tools, actions that we can take, A, to make sure that we're not unconsciously doing this ourselves, which I think, you know, this point around microaggressions are different in that they often aren't malicious, they're unconscious. It doesn't make them right or a good thing, but it does mean that the intention isn't kind of there in the same way as some kind of more aggressive or toxic behaviour. But the impact, I think, probably is just as negative, if not in some ways I can imagine... I've never had this over the same period of time, but if this is kind of chipping away at people's confidence, you can imagine this could have a really long-lasting kind of negative impact. And so we were both thinking about whether we've experienced this at work for ourselves. And I think we had kind of probably one thing in common and a few more individual examples. I think we've both experienced when we were early in our career comments around being too ambitious. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know whether that was because we were younger, whether that was also because we were potentially because we were both female and, you know, there are typically less female kind of leaders in the businesses that we would have both worked for and at that time. But I had had one very specific moment in time in my career, probably I'm trying to remember how many years in I would have been, still maybe only four or five years into my career, where I definitely got some feedback around. um, Yeah, I think I was actually being quite proactive and asking for feedback in a very kind of amazing if way. Mm -hmm. And I do remember a a man saying to me, oh, I think you're a bit too ambitious because I think I was talking about being very driven and wanting to get promoted and understanding what that would look like and how I could develop those things. And I think he was almost a bit dismissive and like, oh, no, that's like too ambitious. Like, don't worry yourself about those things. And I was like, oh, okay. And then definitely wouldn't have had the confidence to kind of do anything about it or certainly not to call him on it. What's interesting, uh, I think I remember specifically within that area and then actually the person he would have worked for at the time, I did actually leave that team. Um, Mm -hmm. And when I look back on it, I think one of the reasons I left it was because I was thinking, I don't think I'm going to progress and succeed in this team in a way that matters to me and actually probably in the way that I believe in and I believe that you know everyone should have equal opportunities myself included and you know I was young and ambitious those things were both true and I I think I was probably talking about wanting to do an MBA and all of those kind of things and just feeling like oh okay this doesn't feel acceptable here in kind of some way and actually in the past I have had people comment on a bit about how you look sometimes Mm -hmm. so I've got very chubby cheeks and I've got quite a young... I I know, but I am. You are not. I have got quite chubby cheeks. That's okay. I can say that about myself. But I do... I certainly looked quite young. I don't know whether I look quite as young now. (laughs) But certainly I did look quite young um, in my, uh, you know, the early years of my career. I'm not very tall. I'm quite small. I'm quite petite and those kind of things. And I do remember almost people trying to give me feedback about kind of going... Oh, you you know, you maybe don't kind of look the part. <laughs> and I have definitely done things in the past that I'm actually now, like, actually a lot embarrassed about to try and appear different. I probably have dressed differently, tried to look older, even, like, down to, like, the makeup I would wear, mm. just to try and be like, oh, I want to 
fit in. I don't want people to kind of alienate me just because I look a certain way or people are going to put me into this kind of box and I don't quite fit the mould somehow. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know whether all of those things are microaggressions or not, but certainly there were things that chipped away at my confidence and it took quite a lot of self-esteem and sort of probably finding people who didn't think in that way or make those comments. And almost as soon as I did... Funnily enough, I sort of really flew. I was probably, mm. I, I, I actually really remember a turning point of going to work for somebody different in a new kind of team and suddenly going, oh, those things don't happen now. Oh, and suddenly I'm doing better and things just seem to kind of click into place. And I would say since that point, I don't feel like I have experienced it, certainly in the same way, but I think particularly in that first four or five years, with the benefit of hindsight now, I think there probably was some of that behaviour, I hope, unconsciously kind of along the way. What about you? I I just think about what you said there about I don't know if it is a micro question or not. I actually think I'm trying not to try and redefine the definition we talked about earlier, but <laughs> any way that somebody makes you question or feel bad about who you are, mm. or whatever that looks like, and it's delivered indirectly. Like if I think if it's delivered directly, it's aggression, discrimination, you know, rudeness, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But indirectly making you feel bad for who you are. I think that's what we're talking about here with microaggressions for whatever reason that is. So I think it is, if that's how you interpreted it. So a couple of people sent me messages on um, our Instagram channel with like, is this it? And I was like, well, if it made you feel bad for yeah. you know that being who you are, I think that is. Um, even if they meant it intentionally or not. I think I talked about this on a podcast recently and um, I've got one that I observed from somebody and one that I experienced. And they both, they're, they're both stick in my mind because I'm actually ashamed that I didn't, bring it either up in the moment so the one that happened to me was when I was having a phone conversation with somebody at an organization I worked at which will remain nameless for now but um it was a relatively heated discussion that I was having with somebody about something whether I was in marketing this person was in sales um and it was a bit of a heated discussion and and the person said to me like um now hang on young lady and I remember I remember really yeah inside feeling like oh you've just made that really personal and it hadn't been personal about until that point. It had been about difference of opinion, which I'm fine with that. But at the point that that came in, I felt like this senior male who was older than me, and they weren't that much more senior actually, it was kind of peers in this team, but was sort of playing that card and trying to diminish my opinion based on me being younger than that person and female. And I didn't maturely call the person out for raising that point and I regret doing that and being that that is the second time I've mentioned that in this podcast I clearly regret doing it and I yes and then the other one is um uh, an organization that I worked in where somebody I'm ashamed of this you know somebody who worked for me I was in a, a performance review meeting and and there was a conversation about some people in my team and there was um, a female that was in my team that was um, ambitious and brilliant, really, really good. And the conversation around the table became about this person being too ambitious and they were too ambitious mm. for that role. And I think I softly challenged it, but I didn't directly challenge it and I felt really uncomfortable. And I talked to somebody else who was in that room afterwards, another woman actually, and I was like, how did you interpret that? Because I didn't interpret that well (laughs) and I thought that was really off but I didn't know whether to challenge it because I wasn't sure if it was just me and she said no I thought the same thing as well and I don't know I was like oh has the moment passed for me to challenge that and you know I never gave that group of people the feedback and I should have done I really should have done so I think these things they really stick with you whether it's happened to you or whether you observed it in other people and I think that's the point that you made earlier Sarah about this stuff accumulating because I'm talking about something that happened to me in the last five years once or twice if this is happening to you on a weekly or monthly basis I can totally see how it would erode your self-esteem yeah I think you would dread going to work you know I talked about in that one team which was probably the team I felt most uncomfortable in ever in my career that I left that team quite quickly and that's probably what will happen people will end up losing really brilliant people because it's very, very hard to cope with. And if people, for whatever reason, do have to stay coping with it, then that's going to have a really big impact on them. And I think if you're listening to this and thinking, I am not sure whether something is a microaggression or not, and the kind of labelling, I would say having read quite a few of the articles prior to the podcast about microaggressions, there are lots and lots of examples online in terms of people sharing where they've experienced microaggressions and whether that is kind of racial or ethnic microaggressions, which are actually the most common. So we've both talked about more sort of gender and age Age. related Mm -hmm. ones because they're the ones that are personal and pertinent to us. 
but actually a lot of the examples are more about where people come from, assumptions that people make based on, you know, the colour of people's skin. And actually, when you read those, you can really imagine how, again, people say these things unwittingly or with just without really thinking, but actually they're incredibly offensive. And if you want to educate yourself, actually, I think the best thing that I found is, is a website which is all about driving awareness of this, and it's simply called microaggressions.com. Yeah. And it's where people, I mean, there are thousands of people who have volunteered microaggressions that they've experienced. And so if you're just thinking, do you know what? I feel like I have a responsibility to know more about this, or you're thinking, oh, this happened to me, was it? Then maybe just scan through some of those things to educate yourself, maybe feel a bit more supported with what other people are sharing there. And so we're going to talk through, um, I don't know whether they're quite the top tips, but no. certainly, um, I don't know if I would describe them in that way, but almost what to do if you feel like you're experiencing microaggression, but also to make sure that you, I guess, are aware enough to make sure that this is not something that you're undoing, you're, that you're mm. doing unconsciously. And I think it's one of those topics where the more you understand, the better equipped you are. So I think this is probably kind of our starting point for going, this is how you can kind of learn more about it. And also for yourself, if you are experiencing it, perhaps start to think, or if you maybe you see it, I think sometimes, you know, we've talked about being, you're an observer, you can see that it's happening. Again, what you might do. And so this is kind of four areas that we're going to talk through, which is acknowledge, respond, learn and listen. And so the first one, which is acknowledge, is if you do see this happening or you think it might be happening a bit like Helen just talked about in that meeting where she was in and she sort of felt uncomfortable. The one thing that Helen did do was check in afterwards with somebody else. I guess the even better thing to do is then to make sure you check in with the individual. Mm -hmm. So if you see somebody else where you potentially see that behaviour, talk to that person and ask them how did they feel, what was their kind of experience of that, because your experience might not be the kind of same as theirs. And actually, if you do recognise that it is then happening try and think about how you can kind of support that person and you know if it is something that you feel that you might have done recognizing it and saying sorry because pretty much everyone makes a language mistake or overgeneralization I think at some point again hopefully unconsciously unwittingly or maybe just being thoughtless in that moment and so if somebody is brave enough I think to talk to you about it and say this is how it made me feel I think this is very hard. You don't need to feel defensive. Actually, what you just need to do is acknowledge and apologise. Or if you're a kind of bystander, if you can raise it with the person who maybe made the comment. And again, if that person can then be encouraged to proactively go to the person and acknowledge it and apologise and say, you know, whether they thought that or not in terms of the impact it had, actually saying, I realise I said this, I appreciate this is the impact it might have had. And I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm very aware of that. And I'm going to be more thoughtful and mindful of it in the future I think actually those things go a really long way for people yeah I agree and another thing in terms of responding so Sarah talked about there maybe about acknowledging it if maybe you feel like you might have done it in terms of responding if you feel like you've experienced it something that we found that was quite interesting was about um, the micro intervention as a response to the mm. microaggression which is really just about how you can sort of respond but educate somebody so it's not about um being aggressive in response to them but it's almost like a comeback and there was a quote that i quite liked in the article again we'll link to all this stuff but you can disarm the microaggression but you also educate the person responsible so you might say i hear what you're saying but um actually i'd like to let you know that that's how that thought made me feel or whatever it is but mm. so you kind of educate them at the same time by saying well i'm I feel particularly put out by that comment, which you might do, and I don't want to diminish that at all, but think about how you can respond but also educate the person. Then that way it might prevent it from happening again. And another thing as well, if you respond, that's if it's happened directly to you, potentially a way of you responding if you see it happening to other people. So this is what I should have done in that meeting, for example. A common thing that I'm sure many of you listening will relate to is where somebody has shared an idea, but it gets ignored the first time around and it some, becomes somebody else's idea in the course of a conversation. And maybe the, the reason it got ignored was because it was a more junior person in the meeting, or maybe it was a woman, or maybe it was somebody else that's been discriminated on 
for some other reason but what you can do there and this is um, an approach that Sheryl Sandberg talked about is you can sort of claw it back for that person and you can say yeah that's a great idea person x you know what Jane, Mary, whoever, they said that first. Can we hear what their perspective on it is? So you sort of act as their support in the room because you're observing this stuff and maybe you haven't got the emotion or the self-esteem that that's sort of digging away at and you can support on their behalf and respond to it in a really positive way. So if it's happening to you, think about can you do a micro intervention, which is about educating the person as well as kind of responding to it. And if you see it happening to somebody else, think about how you can just step into that conversation and, and help to respond for them a little bit. Yeah, one of the things actually I have done on that in the past is talk to that person about um, or acknowledge in the room that that person has built on the other person's idea. Mm. So actually going, not necessarily trying to provoke a reaction by going, oh, you know, who's said what etc but almost going oh I think Helen you've built on Sarah's idea really well there Mm. um Sarah perhaps you could talk a bit more about what you were thinking we might do here to kind of take it back to that person because sometimes again I think people don't even know that they are repeating things like we certainly chat to each other don't we sometimes you know you'll say to me oh yeah sort of what I said and I'll think oh (laughs) and it's because you've not listened properly you know, that's for different reasons, that's just not being a very good listener. But actually, if you have done that in a meeting unwittingly, Mm. because you've not done that well, actually, if you can spot that, I think you have, you know, you might be listening to to this now and thinking, oh, you know, it's not something I've experienced. Or what you can be is a brilliant observer. And you can take action. And I think it's a really positive role that people can start to play in organisations. And that takes us on to the third one, which is learn. And I think this, in an area like microaggressions, where it is more nuanced, it's not out and out as definitive in terms of what they are and potentially what they would do versus more like discriminatory behaviour, for example. Actually, if somebody gives you feedback, try your best to not get emotional or be defensive. View it as an opportunity to learn, to be even better. Be patient, hear someone out, You know, ask for more details, make sure you understand it. And realise how brave somebody is. I do think it takes a lot of bravery to talk to people about these things. And so if someone has been brave enough in your organisation to raise this, whether it's to you directly or you're their manager and they're talking about somebody else, whatever it might be, almost the first thing I think you should probably be saying is thank you for being brave enough to talk about this because I appreciate it's difficult and you know, obviously that person is probably feeling, you know, we talked about the impact of being low self-esteem, chipping away at somebody's confidence. And yet, despite those things, they still had the bravery to come and talk about it. Mm. So I think really feeling and acknowledging and, and thanking actually that person, whether it is the person who has experienced it or whether it is somebody else who's an observer who has raised it. If you're in a position of leadership or if you're leading an organisation or a team, thanking, recognising the bravery and make sure that you kind of your first reaction is to kind of understand and appreciate it. And then, you know, you can't, if those things have happened, you can't go back and change those things. But what you can do is get better and understand and think about how you can educate people internally, whether that's on things like unconscious bias, whether that's things like sharing that microaggression um, website that Helen talked about. You don't have to do that in a negative way. You can do that in a oh, you know, this is something that we can all learn about together and we can Mm. all get better on together. There was definitely statements that I thought I could imagine saying that or I could imagine a scenario where something a bit like that could happen. And I felt better informed and feel like I would be better now at leading kind of more diverse teams and making sure people were feeling more included if they're working with me or for me as a result of learning about this topic. I sometimes feel these areas end up being like, Oh, you know, the bad people and the good people. I know, I know. And I, 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 don't, I don't think this is one of those things. I think this is has lots of kind of shades of grey. And actually, it's much more about understanding, creating an environment of feedback where people can be listened to and kind of open and trusted. That's where I think those you can actually make some kind of progress in this area. I, do, I think as well, if you're just aware and you care yeah. that goes to along we're not saying be perfect like I'm not perfect I've definitely definitely done things that I think oh, I wish I hadn't said it that way but 
I'm trying to get more aware. I'm trying to look at the research. I'm trying to reflect on what I'm saying. And I genuinely care about other people. I think that's as much as we can, maybe if we can help you with the awareness part of it, that's as much as we can help you to do. And then our last tip for you, again, if we can call these tips is around, um, the fourth thing is to listen. And it's to really open up the dialogue. And I, I do wish that I'd done this more in actually some of the organisations mm. that I'd worked in. Like I never had a session around microaggressions. Maybe I did some stuff on unconscious bias, which is really yeah. very linked to this, but I would have really liked to have talked really directly about this is what microaggressions are, you know, when have you experienced, when have, what have you witnessed and just talked about what can we do in a team, how are we going to respond to this if we see it or if actually somebody says something and they don't realise it and let's be really honest that sometimes it might be because we're not thinking but it's not meant with malicious intent. So to actually, you know, listen to each other, open up the dialogue, create a space where people can share things and it might just create a more supportive atmosphere or it might allow somebody who might not be feeling great because this might be happening quite a lot it might give them a space to talk about it and in doing that you would really support them in helping them to maybe move forward with it and helping them to change some of the behaviors that might be happening in the workplace and if you are somebody who um, is working somewhere and you think your organisation or you or your team have come up with some really good ways of talking about this internally, sharing stories, sharing how you might overcome this and kind of tackle these microaggressions, please do share them with us. I think it's really helpful for other people to read examples of where people have done this really well. Maybe they've overcome this, what they've seen that has worked, maybe what hasn't worked. You know, you can private message us on Instagram. Uh, you can email us at getintouchamazingif.com. We're really interested in how we can help both individuals and kind of organisations in this area get better and improve. And as I think we said at the start, it's one of those where we definitely don't have all of the answers. I think we've probably experienced some of it, but nowhere near the extent of certainly some of the examples that I was reading. And we've seen how some organisations have started to address it. But I think this is kind of a newer... I suspect it's always been around in organisations mm. and that now we have a language it's kind of more known. It's one of those things that you is now risen to the surface because people have a way of talking about it, which I think is a really great first step. But now that we can talk about it, I think you've got to move to action quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's the bit that I'm kind of really interested in is how do we take action individually, which is probably what we've talked about more in this podcast. What can you do? But also what can we all do as part of the organisations that we work in? And as ever, we've mentioned the resources a few times. There's the, the Micro Westerns website. There's a couple of different things that have got research. There's um, some articles on Fast Company and Forbes, for example, that talk about how prevalent it is in the workplace. All of those will be over on our website. So if you just go to amazingif.com, you'll see the podcast posts that accompany each of our episodes and you'll be able to get into those resources there. And huge thanks as ever to everyone that listens to it we really respect and value your time these podcasts are somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes and that's a lot of time out of your week and thank you for listening to it we love to hear from you whether you're emailing us or all the feedback that we get and the reviews that we get it really helps us to reach more people and it helps us to know that we're making a difference as well so thank you for that Next week, we're going to be talking about social impact at work, inspired by a few different conversations we've had and different jobs that we've done, different organisations we've worked with. We think that um, it's really important that we think about the social impact at work, but sometimes it can feel a bit lofty or it can feel like it's outsourced to some other department. But we're going to be accumulating different insight from our own experiences and people that we've spoken to as well to talk about how we can all focus a little bit on the social impact that we have in our jobs. So that is next week's episode but we'll leave it there for this week thank you again for your time and we'll speak to you soon bye everyone thanks for listening